and then we're like, let's go. So we go, we, we get ready to leave, and we're basically calling this, this house, like, not haunted at this point. And one last time, I was like, if you're here, prove it. Do, and move something to show me that you exist. And then all of a sudden, no one's upstairs. A D battery, a fat D battery. Do, 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 oh, that's do. creepy, dude. Down the stairs. And I'm like, what the fuck was that? Do you think anyone wants to go to hell? Probably. Who do you think they are? Probably heathens. Would you want to go to hell? Would you, for if given long? the opportunity... <clears throat> I'd go temporarily for like a if, few minutes. If given the opportunity to go for like a I, month. That's a long time. But no. you, you fully experience... <clears throat> what if this is hell? I've been doing it, so it's good. It's fine. Right, but like, you know the how Dolores Cannon says like Earth is like the hardest thing. Like you learn so many things. Wow. What if yeah. like that's actually what hell is? We're just going through so many trials and tribulations and like traumatic experiences learning all these things like this is actually hell if this is hell because if this is the hardest level you can play heaven's gotta be amazing right because this is the hardest level you can play according to Dolores Cannon she never said that but she did she never said earth is the hardest level you can ever play she just said like if you're coming to a planet to learn earth is kind of you know harder than say Mars oh Schmerth I'm assuming there's a planet called Schmerth out there somewhere. Or Schmerth. I can't argue it. So, I mean, it's possible. But yeah, I mean, I would do hell for like a few minutes, but if it's like instant burn and everything, I mean, I feel like that's probably going to be painful. And I don't know if I want to do like a full month of the burn. You know? I guess. If, it, if it's straight burning for a month. If it's actually how the Bible depicts hell. Painful. Yes. A lot but, of pain. I see hell as the way that I understand hell is basically just like the thing that you can't stand the most is prevalent all the time. Sounds horrible. Yeah, but like, what is that to you? A month worth of the worst month of my life. Yeah, but like, what is the thing that you can't stand the most that's going to be there all Um, the time? Well, first of all, burning flesh. I mean, that's right up there. Not being able to breathe. Um, That's pretty bad. So getting waterboarded and also burning alive at the same time, yeah, it sounds pretty bad. Sounds tough. Sounds unpleasant. It would build a whole lot of character, though. Yeah, but, like, what if I just would rather, you know, skip it? <laughs> I would rather not. So you'd do it, you're saying? I would. A month in hell, if you're crazy. Well, I mean, maybe not. Maybe you're just that badass. I don't know. I, I think Earth is hell. Person. A really optimistic way to live your life. Well, no, because you can think about it like this, right? This is hell. We're living in hell, guys. This is the worst place you could possibly be. That's your message to the people. This is this is the absolute worst. It could never get worse. This is the worst Literally. place ever. So, okay. As I was saying, <laughs> um, no, because the Dolores Cannon says like, there's this Earth is like a place where you learn a whole lot of lessons. Like there sure. are like. Places you can go to like just chill. There are places you can go to learn a lesson or two. Mm-hmm. So you can think about it like that. And this is the place that you go to learn multiple lessons. In order to learn lessons, typically you have to go through some type of hardship, mm-hmm. right? So if this is the place to go to go through multiple hardships, mm-hmm. and this is the hardest place to learn your lesson because there's so many lessons, then by default, if you take like the easiest place, this would be hell compared to that. Mm. That's like, how about this? This is your standard of living. Mm-hmm. Now you take yourself, take yourself out of this and put yourself into like a, in comparison, a, a it's mud hell. hut in like an area ran by a gang that just like goes around beating people mm-hmm. and like burning you alive and cutting limbs off. Mm-hmm. Like, and like you don't know where you're going to get your food next. Like mm-hmm. to you, that's hard. To those people, that's life. Sure. You know what I'm saying? So you could say so like in, it's all com- sub- in it's all comparison, subjective. it's hellish, you could say, yeah. in comparison. Yeah, okay. All right, sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm saying. That's what we're saying, guys. 
Earth is hell. Just, you know, get used to it. No, but yeah, in comparison to a perfect world, this is hell, sure. But in comparison to the place where your flesh is burning constantly, now we're in heaven. But that was also proven to be bullshit. Proven. Yeah. Proven. I mean, I guess proven's a hard word to use yeah, when talking proven. about that kind of stuff. But uh, hell was actually somebody who, uh, the Old Testament, I believe it was, they, because all the Bibles, all the the biblical books speak of a kind of the, similar stories, right? And hell was, and I, I'm probably going to butcher this, but it was actually like a place where they burned garbage and they just called it like, they called it a word that translated oh, to hell in English, but like in reality, it's an actual location outside of a town that they burned garbage and they just called it hell. And I don't know where that comes into the Bible, but like that's something that like I, I saw a video that they were so talking hell about. Hell is that. trash, is what you're saying. You don't want to go there. Hell is trash. No, you don't want to go there. Don't I don't know how that plays into the whole like listen to Christianity or you're going here kind of thing, unless like that's the, that was the punishment. Like oh you you know cheated on your wife. Go to the garbage can. Yeah, go to the <laughs> dump yourself. Go to the dumpster. Just dump yourself out. I mean, Possible. <laughs> Possible. It really could be. But how about this? How about this? So heaven and hell, yeah, that's all nice and good. And it's kind of in my, I mean, I think we know now, uh, you know, with the use of psychedelics and yeah. other and other things that, you know, there's different planes of existence. You can go anywhere your imagination takes you. You can go mm -hmm. to, you can create a hell that you can live in for a million eternities and then you can zip off somewhere else. But what if, I'm thinking about ghosts. Mm. What if you're like so stuck to to the earth that you just like you can't let go? Like, do you think that that's possible? Do you think that's yeah. like what? To me, that's, that's where, what to ghosts me, that's are. Where yeah, that's where they come from. It's yeah. like we all we talk a lot about like identity and like not identifying. Like the, mm -hmm. the key to awakening almost is just like realizing that you're you're not the drop, you're the ocean. You're not yeah. the wave, you're the ocean type mm -hmm. thing. But it's like if you get so stuck on the drop that you can't let go, even when you die, you're still stuck on the drop. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Oh, absolutely. Because I mean, in all of the, I mean, it's not like guaranteed like accuracy, but like all these like paranormal shows that ghost mm. hunt and like my personal experience like these ghosts or these spirits or whatever they kind of stay tied to the location that they resided right. or the location they died like there's always some type of personal tie-in to wherever that ghost it's is it's not like i'm a ghost and i'm gonna go to you know paris and hang out right. and now i'm gonna go to milan and now i'm in dubai yeah. it's like no you're stuck in your house yeah because like you're these, stuck, you're attached. Yeah, these haunted houses or these abandoned, shitty little houses or mm -hmm. big houses where they're haunted by a ghost, but it's like, why? Like kids. So what would you tell the ghosts out there? What should, the ghosts who are listening, what should they do? The ghosts that are listening. Yeah. You need to understand that it's it's not about your possessions. It's not about the physical. No. And you're being, you're tied to the physical right now, and that's mm. your problem. Mm -hmm. Not, well, you don't have a problem, but the problem is that's you're tied you're to the here. physical, and that's why you're still here, mm. and nobody mm. can hear you, nobody can see you, except for people with that extra little, what is it, the sixth sense? You could say that. They can, they can communicate with you, but most people can't. Why? Because you're not you're, supposed to be you're here. Not. To be you're honest. supposed to be gone, Get and moving. you need to understand that these physical things aren't for you anymore. No. You deserve better. So should they... Should they hold on or should they let go? What they need to let go. I think that's pretty obvious. Ghosts, let go, guys. Just Come let on. go. But you said you had an actual experience? Mm-hmm. Let me tell you, I had one, but it was really lame. So I'll tell you mine and see if you can one-up me. All right? Sounds good. Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure you can. Yeah. Because I've heard a little bit about yours. Oh, yeah. Quite a bit better than mine. <laughs> but I remember in college, right? Um, I had a, a friend of mine who had claimed that she had seen a ghost before, mm -hmm. and I had never, and I was very, you know, I don't believe it till I see it type. Right. And I was just like, no, I'm like, you're dumb, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. This is the girl that this happened with. So then like a year later, 
This is the same girl. We're in the dorm. We're in like the little suite area. We're just hanging out. TV's off. We're just talking. And all of a sudden, zoo, we see this like, I don't know. Some, someone runs from like the bathroom into my bedroom, basically. Behind you. Behind us. Mm. So we both look back. We're like, what was that? And we go look. There's nothing there. Mm-hmm. And that's the whole story. But there's something... Something, something made you there. both turn. We both saw the thing. Mm-hmm. Like the motion. We, we felt it. We saw it. We looked at each other. Nothing was there. I mean, since then, I've kind of said, oh, yeah, ghosts for sure. But that was the first time I said, oh. I mean, like, that was the there. shit's real. Yeah. But yours was a little more... Mine's a little more insane. in depth. But it's because... <clears throat> so... To preface the story, me and my friend, my my one friend Alex, he, in high school we all had to do a senior project. Mm. We all chose different topics, but we were all interested in the paranormal. Yeah. And we used to, it was just, when we were, when me and my cousin, it started with me and my cousin. When me and my cousin were younger, we used to watch Taps. I don't know if you remember that mm-hmm. show. Taps is the... I forgot what it was exactly. The American Paranormal Society, something of the, the something of that nature. It was essentially, ghost hunters. Okay. Right. So they would go to houses. They would go to these places that were quote unquote haunted with record EVP recorders Ooh. and cameras and yeah. night vision. Da da da. And they would look for these proof that these ghosts exist, but they would be looking to debunk it. So like Mythbusters almost, where they would go and they'd be like, oh, you hear these things? Oh, you see these things? Oh, these things happen? We're going to go in and we're going to figure out exactly why it's not a ghost. So they'd be like, oh, you hear this creaking? This creaking is actually the wood settling at night when there's no one there kind of thing. So me and my cousin, we were like 15, 15, 14, 15, we'd watch these shows all the time. It was always, I remember, it was always on channel, it was on channel, uh, it was on the Discovery Channel. So we'd watch it all the time. And then I went to sci-fi, watched it all the time. And then they came to Rochester. And when they came to Rochester, we were like, whoa, oh. there's some haunted shit here. And when they came to Rochester, they came to, I believe they went to the, I want to say they went to either Mount Hope Cemetery, which we went to a bunch of times, or they went to the abandoned insane asylum Hey, on Elm Wood, Wood. Elmwood Road or something yeah, like that. It's around. Um, but, so we got really into it. And then we started getting our friend group into it because we were all interested in going and checking shit out. So we started out our ghost hunting by going to Mount Hope Cemetery, which is a notoriously haunted cemetery in the United yeah, a States. There's a lot of corpses, isn't there? There's a lot of corpses. It was a Native American burial ground back Ooh. in the day. So there's a lot of time. There's a lot of instances of people driving by, and like a, a child is in the middle of the road, just flashes, and they hit the child, and then when they like slam their brakes, they look back and nothing. Ooh. Stuff like that. So we've all gone into Mount Hope Cemetery. We get in. Like there, there was a there was a gate that was open a little bit, so we kind of climb the fence, get in. Sure. Creepy because it's a cemetery at night. Um, I've never had any experiences there. So to this day, I still don't think my home cemetery is that bad. But my cousin wow. and my friends all claim to have seen these like 12 foot tall black figures that chased Ooh. them out of the cemetery. And they all say the same thing. So they may have seen it, but I've never experienced anything there. So well, before we move on, they said they saw these 12 foot tall yeah. figures. Mm-hmm. In this Slenderman in, type shit. Exactly. Chasing them out, all of them. Three figures chasing the three kids. Ooh. And they it was it was at this one area that was known Jeez. as the uh it was the gateway is what it, it was what it was called. And the gateway was an arch where these it, it basically the best way I could describe it is it brings the it's it's the trail that connects the new cemetery to the old cemetery. Ooh. The old cemetery, you could tell, is old. So you go through, you walk through the cemetery, and there's these beautiful mausoleums and beautiful headstones. And then you walk, and there's just, like, woods all across. And then there's just, like, a hole in the woods. And you look through this hole, and it's just black. And the, the the entire cemetery is paved. This 
walkway to this trail to get to the old cemetery in this black hole is just dirt. So you walk through this on this dirt path into these dark woods and then on the other end is unkept not as nice looking yeah. hilly old cemetery. It like looks like a creepy old that cemetery. Is creepy. So like the new Mount Hope Cemetery is very nice. Yeah. The old Mount Hope Cemetery is not kept well and they when they went from the new to the old, they were crossing back into the new from the old. Because there's like the devil's bowl in the old. That's where like all the spirits reside, I guess. So they were there. They were coming back to leave. And when they were there in this dark area of the tunnel, the gateway, these three figures just appeared. They saw it. They felt it. They looked back. They saw it. And they were running. And I guess they got chased for like a good like three, four hundred feet before they just like disappeared. And then they left. But they all came back with the same story. But... They also, I, I've, I've been there many times and never experienced one thing. So I didn't believe that. But that's, that's kind of where it all started. But then there was a house in town that was notorious for being haunted. Like it was a haunted house in town, the only one. Mm-hmm. And it was a small town that we grew up in. So we, we all knew of it. And we were all talking about how we're going to go in one day because like kids in, there was one kid in school, his name was Nick. He lived in the house. And he said that, like, he'd be sleeping and the covers would be lifted up over his feet. What? And, like, glasses would just get taken and pulled out and smashed on the floor at night. No one's downstairs. Shit like that. So we heard stories. So we're like, well, we're going to Mount Hope Cemetery. We might as well go here. He so still lived there? He lived there when we were in school. They moved after being there for three months. I was going to say, I'd be getting out of there yeah. real quick. Three months. They, they moved in, moved out three months. Um, but it was uh, one... One day, it was the Spenceport Festival, or I'm sorry, Spenceport Fair. They had like the Fireman's Fair or whatever, yeah, yeah. where like all the, you know, the whatever it is. Carnival, carnival, I'm sorry, that's the word, carnival. So we, me and my friend Alex, who was also into ghost hunting and all that, we went to the carnival, and then we were like, let's go check out the house. So we left the carnival and went to the house. When we went to the house, you walk up and you just feel like, because paranormal and spirits, they're energy. Mm. So you walk up and you just feel this like dense so, energy. Yeah, what does it feel like? Is it, it? I'm imagining like it pulls you in, like it's almost like a gravity or something. The best way that I could describe it to like the average person is like the feeling that you're being watched mm. from behind, mm. but it's in front of you. So you know the feeling of like if you're like standing there, you could feel someone like mm-hmm. watching you. You're like, and you could like tell that creepy right? feeling. Yeah. But, like, that feeling is coming from in front of your face. Mm. So, like, you're looking at nothing, but you feel something staring at you. That's very interesting. So, like, we, we went up to the house. We, we parked in a neighborhood nearby, walked up to the house. The grass was all, the grass was probably, like, a foot high, unkept. The house was all dusty and right. old and shitty. Looking and we walk up a <laughs> as a motherfucker. We're there at, like, 11, 30, 12 at night. So, we walk up, and we're just, like, looking we're listening we get this weird feeling and we pussy out we're like we're not going in and then but we said we're gonna come back Mm. so we didn't go in that night but we made a vow we're gonna go back then it was me him and my cousin we went back like a week later and when we went back we the first time when me and alex went we checked and there was a door that was unlocked on the side of the house so we knew, let's go we to this door, get we'll get in. We get into the living room. And when we get in the living room, there's the imprint of coffins on the wall. Mind you, this used to be a funeral home or something like that way back in the day. But there was a point in time when the kid that I went to school with lived, lived there. there. Yeah. So there were, I'm, I'm sure there wasn't, you know, caskets sitting on the wall <laughs> when he was living there. But there were imprints of caskets on the wall. Weird as fuck. Like dust? or Yeah. Like, you know, like if something sits somewhere for a yeah. long time and then you remove it, there's like a clean yeah. something and then the dusty, yeah, that, mm. of yeah, caskets on weird. the wall. It was like two on the one wall and then two on the other wall, just like that. Um, so we walk into this side door and when we walk in, you see the imprint of the caskets. You're on a, a, an old wooden floor, windows all around you, stairs at the end of the living room, because that's what we walked into was a living room, and then mm-hmm. a kitchen on the other side of the stairs. So we were just like sitting there, listening. Don't hear nothing. We're like, it's not that bad in here. 
Because I'm, I'm, I'm in the mindset of always, I want to debunk fake. it. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So we go, I'm like, it's not that bad. And then we go up to the stairs and we're like, do we go up? And we didn't really know if we should or not. Were like, you feeling this it was, vibe still? Oh, the vibe is the, in the entire place. But I'm over here like, it's yeah. probably in our head. Fuck it. Yeah, yeah. So like we go up and I'm like, I'm like, from the ghost shows that we watch, if you're here, show yourself. Mm. If you're here, show yourself. So I said that a few times and nothing. And then we're like, let's go. So we go, we, we get ready to leave. And we're basically calling this, this house like not haunted at this point. And one last time I was like, if you're here, prove it. Do, and it moves something to show me that you exist. And then all of a sudden, no one's upstairs. A D battery, a fat D battery. Oh, that's <laughs> creepy, dude. Down the stairs. And I'm like, what the fuck was that? And then I go up the stairs a little bit because the stairs went up and then a flat surface and then up. Uh -huh. So it, it was down here. I heard it hit. Oh, to that so then I walk up the three steps to get to that level. And I'm like, this just went down the stairs. And it was a D battery. That's not just happening. It went down the stairs you know there was some force something involved. made it move yeah and we're like okay there might be some validity to this house right so then we left after that that was enough for us I mean, we left creepy. then we came back again later on it was me my cousin alex and our friend brandon when we went in we went in and i this was the time that i really wanted to test these spirits and I went in there like a piece of shit, mm. Un disrespectful. Mm. I went in there, so and when you, <laughs> when you, uh, when you walk in, like I said, you walk in from the side. It's yeah, the living room, yeah, yeah. stairs, kitchen. Mm -hmm. To the left was a library. Mm. So we walk into the library this time. So we walk in, go to the library. In this library, we are. I, I'm saying, if you're here, show yourself. Because last time I said it, it did something. You know what I'm saying? So. If you're here, show yourself. If you're here, show yourself. And we're going through, looking at the books, this and that. All of a sudden, I just black out. I black out. And I don't remember anything. And then I wake back up outside the house. And I'm, huh? and I, I, I literally, I'm like. Wait, well, hold on. Mm -hmm. huh? So I black out in the library. Yeah. I feel lightheaded. And then I black out. Yeah. And I'm like. And then I, I come back to outside the house. And I was like, what I literally, happened? I'm like, yeah, what, what, what do we do? Why are we outside? And they were like, you were literally bitching about how you couldn't stand to be in the house anymore. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm here. And they were like, no. And I remember feeling lightheaded, blackout. And then I ended up out there. I felt lightheaded or whatever. I looked into it, supposedly spirits, which is why EVPs are a thing. They have like this electromagnetic field that can pull energy. So that's a possibility. I could have also just been lightheaded. So again, I debunk, done, that's not what that was. Well, let's think about what that could have been. Were you possessed? It's a possibility, because I don't recall any of it. It's almost like, hypothetically. It was trying to get us out. Right. Yeah. So. Whoa. That happened, we left. Because I wanted to leave so bad, we left. Right. I don't remember that. And now you're like, guys, why are we out here? Like, so, the, uh, mm -hmm. so then I'm like, let's go back again. I want to go back same again. Same night? Uh, no, it was like a night, a night or two later. Because we basically spent an entire summer just harassing this house. Harassing these ghosts. Oh, so we go back and I'm like, we need a recorder so we can record any audio. Mm -hmm. So we walk to this house again. It was me, Alex, my cousin, and Brandon again. We walk to the back, there's a big oak tree. And we're standing up there. If you're here, give us a sign. What do you want to tell us? Mm -hmm. All of that stuff outside of the house, underneath this big oak tree. And we don't hear anything, obviously. We're recording, we're assuming we're not going to hear anything until we get back to the house and listen to the recordings anyway. So we're like, okay, nothing. Then we walk in the side entrance again. We go in the living room. This time, we go upstairs. So this time we walk time. up, the first time we go upstairs, we walk up the stairs. We, I think we might have gone to the library. Nothing happened. We go up the stairs, whatever. And when we walk up the stairs, there's a room to the far left. There's a bathroom immediately in front of us when we get up the stairs. There's a bedroom on the far right. And then adjacent to that is the, the door to the attic. 
So we go into the bathroom. We walk in just looking around. There's some Gatorade bottle on the ground. So people have been there already, obviously. Some broken glass, like whatever, mm -hmm. abandoned house shit. Mm -hmm. We go into this room. So when you go in the bathroom, the room connects to the, the bedroom on the far right. So we go into that bedroom. That bedroom has blue wallpaper all around it and then a design of a cowboy on a horse lassoing. Like this right here? Except for without the, without the helmet. But yeah, similar to that. So it's like, we assume it's probably like a little boy's room that mm -hmm. it was at one point in time. So, and there's a nightstand in the middle. So we all just sit down on the nightstand. We sit down on the nightstand and we do the same thing. If you're here, give us a sign. If you're here, talk to us. What do you want to tell us? Who are you? What's your name? Ask all these questions. Yeah. Don't hear anything. Don't feel anything. Nothing happens. Okay, cool. We get up off of the nightstand and we walk back into the bathroom. We walk in the bathroom, look out the window, and as the last person leaves the bathroom, the whole house picks up, drops. And I can only describe it as that because that's exactly how it felt. It felt like the entire house just was picked up and dropped. And we're like, what the fuck was that? We're looking out the window. We're trying to find out what made that happen. You think an earthquake or something? In an earthquake, someone's outside fucking with the house, cops are there ramming into the, like anything. Cause like, who the fuck ever has been in a house that was lifted up and dropped? Nobody. But like things in the bathroom moved and shook and dropped because of that. So something happened. So we're like, what the fuck was that? We're looking outside, we're like, okay, cops are here. Like we have to make sure we don't get caught. Mm. And then after a while we're like, okay, it was nothing. And then we go to leave the bathroom. Picks up, drops again. At that point, we're like, something did that. Not someone, but something did that. So we get out of there. When we get out of there, we leave, we get in the car. It's oh my crazy. God, that was fucking insane. And then we start playing the recordings. Oh. Where, so we start with the, we rewind it all the way to the beginning. We start with the recording outside the house. If you're here, tell us your name, give us a sign. The only recording, this is exactly the audio that we heard. If you're here, or it, it was either, if you're here, give us a sign, or if you're here, tell us your name, or something of that sort. So we ask that question, uh -huh. then you can hear the audio go, get out now. No. Back to us. So like literally what happened is you can hear us talking, the wind and everything, clear as day as if something was in the fucking microphone of this recorder says that and then back to us now mind you we are all together the entire time so there was at no point an opportunity Someone for one of the friends to fuck with or whatever yeah. exactly so we're like no fucking way we stop listening to it there and we go back to the house we're like we're gonna sit down and we're gonna go listen to the house. no not kid. that house back to oh, back to my buddy's say. house and we sit down and we listen to the whole thing you're here give us a sign we heard that then we're in the the little boys room or what we assume to be the little boys room if you're here give us a sign it goes leave back to us they don't want you there and i'm like we're just like yo what the fuck so at that point we're kind of like what? scared we're like okay we're not going to go in anymore but we have one friend hunter who was an absolute absolutely psychotic human being <laughs> And when we told him that, he's like, we got to go. And we got to bring the girls, too. And okay. he, was, he was like the kid that if anyone was going to get arrested, <laughs> him, for sure. So we were like, you know what? Fuck it. We're going to go in a big group. What's going to happen, right? So we go back. The side door is locked now. Someone figured out that we got in the side door, added a whole new lock to it. It was, an, it was a house that was up for sale, so the real estate agent probably came through, sure. saw it was open, locked it, put a whole new, brand new lock on it. That's not good enough for, my, for Hunter, though. He takes a rock and bashes through the window in the garage, breaks it, yeah. jumps in through that window, yeah. and unlocks the garage door. So sense. now we all get into the garage. We stand in the garage, nothing's in the garage, whatever. The door to the house is locked. The door to the basement is not. Oh. So we walk down. Creepy. And we all go into the basement from the garage. When we're in the basement, the basement is full of shit. So there's photo albums, papers, pictures, 
toys, tools, shit, all everything, that stuff. but full. So whoever owned that shit would have rather left than took their shit. Mm. Which to me was like a, what the fuck happened here? Sign. Mm. So point. now we're all sitting, there's a table in the middle of the basement around all this shit. And we're all just standing around the table with our flashlights on. What do you want to do? Whatever, whatever. Doesn't, like, we're not really, because me and my friends know, this place is fucked. <laughs> so we're not really trying to push yeah, the limits yeah. here, you know? And Hunter, he found a picture of a nice, a nice family portrait. Oh, boy. Of a, a family from, it looked like back in the day, it was black and white, everyone's in suits and gowns. Oh, it looked like an old picture in this beautiful silver frame covered in glass. He goes, if you're here, give us a fucking sign. Nothing. If you're here, give us a fucking sign. Nothing. If you're here, show your fucking self. Takes the picture, spikes it onto the ground, shatters. Mm. Me and my friends all look at each other. This isn't going to be fun. Yeah. So then, nothing. And we're like, awesome. Cool. Okay. We, we get it. We, nothing happened. We're, we're just fine. So then we're all walking up the stairs, and then as the last person gets onto the stairs, the house, boom, drops. Me and my friends know exactly what that is, so we bolt. Granted, we're in the house, so we can only bolt in the house, and all the doors are locked. So we can't leave. So we have to just run around the house like dumbasses. this is like a week later or whatever. This is a week or two later, yeah. So we're running around the house. We all meet up in the kitchen. After everyone gets done scrambling, we meet up in the kitchen. We're like, yo, what the fuck was that? The house literally does that. We told you that. That's what we told you happens. He goes, okay, let's go upstairs. I'm like, you motherfucker. <laughs> so then we go upstairs. I'm the last one in line. We all have our flashlights. We go up the stairs. Nothing happens, whatever. We go into, I know we went into the, cow. I think we went into the cowboy's room first. Because, yep, because that's where we heard the voice. Mm -hmm. And that's where the drop mm -hmm. happened. So we go in the cowboy's room, the bathroom, and I think we even went into the attic, which was weird because there was a bunch of fantasy football memorabilia and stats from like the 90s. This was 2013. Yeah. Um, but it looked like fairly Not recent. That old. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we leave there, and then there's a the one bedroom left. When you go up the stairs to the far left, we didn't go into it yet. So we go into the bedroom and we're just looking around and i notice a steak knife on the dresser don't think anything of it whatever just nothing sitting on yeah, the dresser. just sitting on the dresser laying there and i'm like whatever who cares i'm not gonna touch it like is this fucking steak knife who cares we're walking around nothing okay cool we all go to leave as soon i'm last in line again <laughs> right so we leave no one touched a steak knife we leave, I'm last one in line. As soon as my foot passes through the barrier between the hallway and that bedroom, whole house, up, boom. As soon as it drops, we all turn to run back into the room. That steak knife went from on the dresser to in the wall, wiggling. And I was like, no, I literally turned back around and like, we're out of here. And I'm we, dead if that hits me. Exactly. This thing went from moving the house and dropping a battery slightly to picking up a knife and stabbing it into the wall with enough force to still be wiggling. Now, where was it compared to, like, say, here's the room. This is the room. Mm -hmm. How far was it to, like, where it landed? You know what I'm saying? Like, was it, like, right next to the thing or did it shoot no, across? No, it was literally the equivalent of, like, it, if this is the dresser, yeah. it went from here. To like, like here. this is the wall. The dresser's up against the wall. It just went from here, laying to in the wall, so wiggling. Just, just got up and yeah, jumped, exactly. Basically. It's so still crazy. We Fuck. we turned back around. We're like, we gotta go, and we did that. And again, as soon as we cross the threshold back, because we're all going downstairs now. As soon as I cross the threshold of that room again, picked up, <laughs> dropped again, and we're like, we have to fucking go. This thing got active that night, and we're like, we gotta go. So I think. I forgot. I think we might have left Jeez, through the front crazy. door. We unlocked it and just dipped, left the door open and dipped. Never went back after that. And then, weird, like weird coincidental whatever after the fact, is I was telling this story to my girlfriend at the time. And it was her, it was Halloween night. It was me, her, her son, her friend, her friend's son, whatever. 
we're all doing trick-or-treating, whatever, I'm talking about the story, she's telling her friend this story, and I'm like verifying, adding in details and all that shit. She goes, let's go. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> let's go. Someone lives there now, though. So we can go and see if we can check it out still. We go, and I go up to the door. I knock on the door. This little kid answers the door. Hello? Hi. Uh, so, this is weird, but like, when I was younger, I came into this house with a bunch of my friends, like, when it was like, before you guys moved in, and like, a lot of weird, like, ghost haunted type stuff happened. Is anything weird happened? And he just looked me dead in the eyes. He goes, nothing weird is here. And I'm like, yeah, but like, not, you haven't noticed anything? He's like, everything is fine. In a creepy ass way. In a creepy fucking way. Like he was possessed. Like he was possessed. And I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, okay. And he's like, have a good night. Mind you, this kid's like five. Could just be a normal kid, just being. That's yeah. But I was just like, all right, whatever. You were there. You saw it happen, though. Yeah, I was like, bro, this place was fucked. There's nothing wrong here. Yeah. Because his head like twisted. Dude, literally (laughs) full, full eye contact with me, without blinking. And I'm the, just like the ghost, like the house is uh, essence is in his fucking mind. It was fucking crazy. But that's right there. That's what verified that the paranormal and the ghosts actually exist. Because there is not a fucking Dude. thing in this world that can explain what I saw. And the thing is, it's not just me. It's me and every one of my friends. Well, you were there. Will a tell bunch you the times. same story exactly. They will all tell you the same story. I found out about the whole like getting possessed or whatever. From them. Yeah. And they all have that story that I don't even have. Like, we all have the same exact story about the same exact place. And all you have to do, if you ever were to encounter one of my friends, hey, Michael was telling me about the house. That's enough to have them just go and tell you the same story that I just told you. So you can confirm that ghosts are real, is what you're saying. A thousand percent. I would put my life on it. That house, before that house, I didn't think it was real at all. That house alone, because I also went into the insane asylum here, mm-hmm. and that's just creepy. Nothing, nothing haunted though. That house too heavy to lift. Probably. Full, yeah, <laughs> that's probably what it was. Yeah, it was, way too heavy. Like, ah, it was like fifty stories. It was way too heavy <laughs> to lift. But yeah, I've been in that. That's creepy. Mount Hope Cemetery to me, that was just creepy. That house, things moved. Things that shouldn't, that do not move on their own, moved. The house moved. I got possessed or whatever that in that time period something happened you know what i'm saying like things that have no explanation happened everywhere else was just creepy that place mm. shit happened and that's how you learn too through experience right like the yeah. second it actually happened it's like that happened like, oh I yeah i saw that i was there i felt it mm-hmm. mm. yeah and i've never oh, we please. from that point like we went we did the house and then we went to mount hope cemetery again nothing happened to me uh, we went to the insane, the ins- asylum, the abandoned asylum. Creepy. There's a whole lot of old clothes and shit, so it's real creepy, but not haunted. We went to the abandoned asylum in Dansville, on the top of the hill. Literally, the perfect place for a haunted house to be. It looks like a place that, like, a haunted movie would take place. Yeah. Not a thing. Everything has never had the experience. Everywhere that's haunted has never shown me that it's haunted. It's just creepy as fuck because there's shit from like. 1930 chilling like there was like a coca-cola can from 19 like the 1940 olympics yeah in the basement the next to a pack of like marlboro cigarettes from 1910 like you know what i'm saying like yeah, just so like creepy old historical and shit and like it's been here for a long time yeah you know no, yeah. but the only place of all of these haunted places that showed me that it was haunted was that house and there is not a thing that can prove more to me that their spirits exist more than moving a knife into a wall, a battery down the stairs, and the whole house shaking. Not a thing the can prove. The whole house lifting up and dropping like yeah. that? I can't even explain. I'm actually jealous. I'm really jealous. Dude, it's, it's insane. And the thing is, like, that how I don't know how people live in the house now. Like, every time I pass that house, they're possessed. I'm just like, how? Because, like, they're an affluent family. Like, they have, like, a portrait of them with the Obama family above their fireplace. Like, no, no wonder. It's insane. Like, I, I don't know, like, just an Escalade chilling outside. I'm just like, how? How do you, like, having been in that house, how do you live in that house? Mm, Unless, like you said, they're all possessed. I don't know. I don't know. Yikes. So ghosts are real. Um, Spiritual world is real. Oh, absolutely. As above, so below. So, yeah. Wow. 
Yeah, it was. That is honestly like, that's what made me really believe it. But again, 99% of the places that everyone says is haunted. And I've been everywhere between here and Buffalo and Dansville that's supposedly haunted. Not one place has proven it to me, except for this random residential house in the middle of Spencerport, New York. That's it. Yeah, because that's the one that you needed to wake your shit up. Bro, that shit woke me the <laughs> fuck up. I'm still to the... If that house was to be abandoned again, I would be scared shit. I would go again, for sure. Oh, I would definitely. But I'd be scared shitless to go. If when, like, my friends, like, back in the day, they'd be like, let's go to my home cemetery. I'm just like, nah, there's nothing there. Boring. This house, if that happened to be a thing now, even though I'm 29, if they offer me that house again, I'm, yup, I'm going. Because that was the closest I've gotten to interacting with the spirit realm in my whole life. And it's crazy. It's fucking Jeez, crazy. That's fucking nuts, bro. But that's, I mean, that's as much proof as you could possibly have. Aside from seeing one, that's one thing that I wish. I wish I could visibly see one. I've never done that. They saw those little yes. shadowy figures. I've never seen one. I don't know if you want to see that. I know a lot of people who have like out of body experiences or like, you know, they'll have like the night terrors. Yeah. It's like they're in their bed and they can't get up. Mm -hmm. But then there's like, a, there's like someone there. Yeah. I don't know if you, I don't know if you really want that. Maybe I, you do. That I, no, well, that's different. Like if I was, fully capable of moving and saw like if a spirit walked across and we saw it that'd be cool but, but like were, if i was if like paralyzed and he came up to your face yeah and nah. that shit. no that's my i need that's full freedom to right i there. need freedom to run like that's why i would go in the house again i have freedom yeah. to run yeah but if it was like a thing where like every time i went in i got possessed fuck no i'm not doing that never never that jeez that's oh, so cool to me. Yeah, that's a... I mean, it's, it's an experience for sure, but, like, it's, it's fun looking back, but the adrenaline rush and the amount of fear that goes through your body knowing that you are in physical danger without seeing where it's coming from. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Because, like, in the moment, it's like the house picked up and dropped. Like, immediately what went through my mind was, like, what if die. that happens and these floors just collapse? You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no house built in upstate New York is built to handle the house shaking that hard. Yet, here we are. Literally, like, you heard a, however many tons a house well, if is. they could make a house move, they could make you move. They could that's smush what I'm your saying. brain. They could yeah. throw you against the wall. They could, Bro, it's, you know? It's insane. Be, and like, you it, it, it's an, You can't compare this to anything because, like, you can hear, that's what, I think that's really what it was. The sound of the house being picked up and dropping. Because it's like, it's it's louder of... than thunder. It's harder than thunder. Like, there is not one sound I can compare it to. Yeah. To this hundreds of tons of wood and metal and glass just dropping. And it literally sounds like the house is going to collapse in on you because of, how much this house moved, and it's a house. It's not supposed <laughs> to move, but it moved, and you can feel it move. Told, it's not supposed to, to move. Get out, bro. They told me to get out, and we got out after it was doing that shit, but we went right back in afterwards. And it's just, get out. dude, you can't. Yeah, in the audio recordings. Do you? See, I'm. A, you don't still have those, do you? I never had them. My buddy Alex had them. I don't know if he still has them though. I I should text him. He you might, cause that's like, bro, that's family. the most traumatic fucking. You gotta, thing. we gotta watch, listen to those sometime. He made a whole. I remember we were actually gonna like after that we were gonna make like a whole taps thing, and everywhere else we went wasn't haunted, so it wasn't worth shit. Uh, but like that house, dude, that house literally, the most haunted place in the fucking, the most haunted place in New York State hands down. No way that anything can beat out that. Like, there's I mean, like, pretty crazy. there's some subtle movement or noise that you might hear. You might maybe even like, maybe out of the corner, well, the you guys see something. Like, okay, a little battery. Okay, in the whole house. What really fucked me up? The reason why I never went back? The knife. Because well, like yeah, the house you could die from. Yeah, I the mean, house moving is like, it felt like the house was gonna collapse, but we were in there for enough of those to where I were like, the house doesn't collapse, so mm -hmm. we know it's not gonna collapse. Probably. But like for me, last time I went in it was because it moved a knife. 
It moved a knife that was literally manufactured to cut through meat. I'm like, yeah, nah, because if it could get into a wall, that's meat. It was probably that deep into the wall. That's murder. That deep. Imagine a knife being that deep into, like, the amount of force that it takes to get that deep into a wall, it doesn't take that much force to get through me. No. So all it had to do was instead of going to the wall, going to me. That's why it was the last time I went in there is because of that. I'm like, if it moved this steak knife, it could have been me, not the wall, because I was the last one in that room. That was enough for me. That was I it. I mean, yeah. And I think my friends went back one or two more times afterwards, but I literally swore off that place for a little while after that. What? Don't freak me out. What did you see? The lights flickered. Did they? Yeah. I think they flicker all the time, though. Now they do. If you uh, are, no. if you're here, give us a sign. No. no, we don't need any signs. We're good. We're good. We're good. Thank you. Whole we don't apartment need... just picks up. And... Imagine that, dude. I'm telling you. Well, the thing is, though, the way I see it is like, I don't think they were gonna kill you. You know. I don't. It was just signs I mean, to get out. I think. But like, yeah, it's it's easy to say that for me. Like, well, I wasn't there. Of course, there. You know, we'll go back there again. Then nice. Well, that's the get thing. You. Like, it never. It, the, but... it, it was never. The reason why we kept going back is it was never malicious. Up until the steak knife, it was never malicious. It was just like, it, it. The best way I can compare it to something is like a chihuahua. Mm. Like it was just like trying to scare us, but doesn't do anything. Mm-hmm. But like once that knife got in the wall, I'm like, it might still be trying to like scare us, but like that worked. I could slip and still get stabbed. Right. Exactly. But like the house moving, like the first time the house shook. That was scary, but like after two, three of them, you're like, oh, we know what that is. It's scary as fuck, don't get me wrong, because it literally feels like the entire thing is going to just collapse in on you, but it doesn't. But like, and the D battery was like a soft thing. It was like, it was almost like he like, whatever the ghost was, just like tapped it and just like let it. It's like you asked for it. Okay, I'm here. And then the voice in the recording saying, get out which honestly should have been enough for us never to go back. That's correct. But that was, again, like, there's something here that just doesn't want us to be here, but, like, we're not ruining anything. We're just chilling. But the day that he broke that portrait downstairs Mm. is the day the knife went in the wall, and I did not want to be associated with that steak knife in the wall or that group of people, because I'm like, imagine if he's just like, well, if you're going to start breaking shit in here, I guess I'm stabbing you. Yeah. You break me, I break you. Type yeah, thing. exactly. I didn't want to do that. So that was it for me. We broke a window and a portrait that night, and then a steak knife is in the wall. Every other time we just walked in and walked around, no one ever got hurt. It was just the house shaking and the voices. No one ever got yeah, hurt. I have a friend of mine who's like so scared of ghosts and shit, and I used to always make fun of him. And now I'm like, yeah, dude, they're definitely real. Just don't fucking tell me that. But it's mm-hmm. like, you were right. But like, oh. but like you said, they, you know, they didn't kill you. You didn't. Sur- you did survive. Mm-hmm. The knife was enough to get you out of there. But there's not a lot of stories of them actually. Like, I feel like there's rules or something. You know, it's like you can't. Can you really just be a ghost and start murdering people? I don't. I don't. Know, I mean, maybe. I think the the most I've ever heard was scratching. I've heard of Leaving scratching. scratches. Have you yeah. seen, uh, there's a nice uh, documentary thing on Netflix called, I think it's Surviving Death. That's a great title. Great title. There's a, the, a first few episodes are about like kids who remember their past lives and stuff. Oh, I love Very that. Very interesting. I love that. Like a five-year-old kid who's like, oh, no, 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 I live here and this and these like n- naming my wife and my kids and this and that. And they're like, mm. okay. But then they look it up and it's like, it all checks out and they're like, what? Yeah. And there's all, but the, the weird ones, I mean, that's weird, but the interesting ones for me, because I was like, to me, that's like, okay, we know about past lives, big deal. Yeah. But this was like where they're talking about like the ectoplasm, mm-hmm. like the basically taking the ether and like turning into like a thing, like a physical object. So like these people will do these like seances where they're like in a room, a dark room, and they're all holding hands and they're kind of the same thing, but they're like asking for you know, the, the ghost to come down or whatever, but it like creates this physical thing. Really? This like, I don't know what it is. I've never seen it myself. It's just this goo or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. It's like a plasticky type thing. They, it, it, it's created. Really? 
like it's manifested. That sounds really interesting. I've never heard of that ever. Yeah, I don't know enough about it to talk about it, to be honest. I shouldn't have brought it up. But yeah, ectoplasm. And uh, it's kind of like what you're saying with the knife. It's like things can actually manifest. Things can actually mm -hmm. be moved and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. And it's, uh, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, this, this, this shit is absolutely real. And I'm trying to think of somewhere like locally that like you could verify it. But there's really... We should find nowhere. Something. We should definitely find something. If there was somewhere, because like the the asylum, that's like creepy, right? Mm -hmm. But they boarded that shit up heavily. Like I remember, I was there. It was me, Hunter, and uh, me, Hunter, his girl, my girl, and we broke into the asylum. And when we broke in, we're walking around, and uh, I remember bro, it was. It was it was a fun experience. There's nothing haunted. But like we broke in and we're going around and like there's like you know how they used to do the electroshock therapy mm. for psychotic people mm -hmm. or like mentally ill people. Yeah. So you go in this one room and it's a bunch of just tables with the little helmets, the little helmets shit, right on top of them. There's ovens, there's uh what's it called That's where they creepy. put the dead bodies after they die like to keep them cool. Um, those little like the like, coolers, those little the drawers. Yeah. Yeah, they had those. Open. A lot of them are open because people go in and they steal them. Medicine cabinets broken into. There's medicine from like years ago because this place was like opened and closed. It was closed like immediately. So like signs from back in the day and like PA speakers from back in the day. There's like little dresses for kids and stuffed animals because kids used to be there. That's not creepy. Little rooms with like designs for kids because kids used to go to class there. Wheelchairs, chairs, bathrooms, beds. What? I'm like, wrong. you'd see all that shit, right? And then I remember Hunter being psychotic as usual. We went to the very top. We had to go to the very top. So we climbed like 30 flights of stairs to get to the very top of this building. At the top of this building, we're at the we're on the we're on the the roof of the entire structure and there's um like what's it like metal metal like parts to an AC unit. Mm. I think a, a lot I'm sorry, no. AC. There was like an AC unit or two or something. Like on the roof, like on connected. the roof. Just just sit no sitting there. Oh. I don't know why. So like these big metal objects. And him, being him, throwing it off the roof, threw it off the roof. 30, 30 floors. So when it hit the ground, it's a big one. Uh, it's a huge noise. So two of those happened, and then we go back in. We go back down, whatever, whatever. Walk around, and then we meet up with more people. There are more people in there. People are going in there, breaking, whatever. And then there's under the thing, like oh fuck. Yep. <laughs> and then we go, we get, we all had the, or one of us had the uh, police scanner hmm. on the phone. We hear the police are coming. Mm. We're like, fuck. We're way too far from the entrance slash exit to get, to get out. out before so we go back there. to the roof. When we go back to the roof, we look. Now the cops are there. And there's four kids sitting handcuffed, oh. lined up outside the building who tried to get out. Damn. So we go to the basement. We go back down, go to the basement. We try and like figure out what we're going to do. We try and find another exit. We end up finding. It's kind of exciting. Oh, dude, it was fun. It was awesome. We end up finding. It was because, mind you, it was me. Hunter, my yeah. girl, and his pregnant girl. Oh. And we can't get out from the easy exit. So what did we do? We break a window on the third floor, or fourth floor, I'm sorry, because there's a, there's a little, like, a flat area in front of the fourth floor window. So we break the fourth floor window, get onto that flat area, all four of us. Then we look down. There's a, there's a drop down. To there's a drop down and a gap. To the next roof, basically. To the next flat area. Oh god. So we go from the fourth floor to the second floor. Mind you, there's a pregnant woman yeah. with us, and you have to you either jump or get down, and then kick yourself off to get to make it to that. Otherwise, you're dropping four floors to the ground. Jeez. So we get down, kick off. I kick off. He jumps off. Whatever. Now we're on the second floor. From the second floor, there's a fence. Going from the second floor, that area, there's a fence along the underside of the entrance stairway. So there's an entrance stairway, and then we're on the second floor here, and there's a fence covering it, so people can't just be chilling mm -hmm. down there, you know? Mm -hmm. So we have to jump, grab the fence, and then from there go down. So we're, at this point, we're cut up. 
between having to scale down a building and grab onto like this chain link fence, we're cut up. And then we just like, we finally all get there. And then we sit down. There's a cop posted up at the entrance. There's a cop posted up on the other oh. side. And there's a cop going around. So as soon as this cop passes us, we're like, Now's we gotta go now. Bolt. We all sprint out and we go into this neighborhood. We're not even parked here. <clears throat> we're parked like on the other side. We're just trying to get out of this point. Yeah. So we bolt. We don't get caught. That was the only time that we went there though. But that wasn't haunted. That was just like crazy. So fun. That's honestly, that's like probably the best place like that I've gone to. Fun wise, that's probably the best place because it's like the most well kept. Because mm. Rochester's Rochester just kept it up. So like everything was still in it. It was boarded up. Don't go in here. So it was just there. It was the dopest place. Not haunted though. Not the house. Interesting. Wow. So it sounds like we need to somehow get that little creepy kid out of that house and go back in there. Knives out. I'm down to experience it. Not knives out. No, 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 no. Bulletproof knife vests on. We need our knife vests. Helmets yes. up. Oh, Go in there with the medieval armor to make sure we can stand. <laughs> yes. I'm down w- only if we have the medieval, medieval no, and armor. and then you're the one who gets shot with an arrow <clears throat> through the little hole. Stop. <laughs> Probably. But the way those ghosts are, I believe it. But it seems like they're more to scare than they are to murder, so I think we'd probably survive. Got a good chance. I feel like the knife is almost like the last straw to be like, get the, the fuck, fuck out of here mm-hmm. but like i feel like there are rules i mean i mean there's probably not rules but like they're probably incentivized against murdering probably yeah. judging by the fact that they didn't fuck with us that bad right. I mean, they just scared us yeah still jeez louise all right well here mike why don't you uh there's another one coming isn't there another poll for a fan oh we got another poll for a fan we got a friend of mine, Justin. Oh, yeah. We got a pull for him to see his future. That's right. Um, I believe it was, what did I tell you? Financial? I don't, for him, I think it was more like uh, societal almost. Societal, yes, yes, yes. We're doing past, present, future, or we didn't do the full? What are you future? feeling? I'm feeling kind of just a past, present, future, to be honest. Let's do it. So past. Mm-hmm. And of course the present. Ooh. Yeah, that's right. And future. The futuro. Interesting, Justin. This is your actual future. Let me look real quick to see what it's like. Oh, okay. Oh, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay. <coughs> oh, oh yeah? <laughs> All right, so let's see. Past? Let's check it. Ooh. Past is the Ace of Swords. Ooh. The, what is the Ace? The gift from God? The idea from the, the heavens? heavens? Right? So it's like he's got these ideas. They come from basically nowhere. Mm-hmm. But they're generally good new ideas. They could lead somewhere. They could lead nowhere. It's, uh, where do they lead? I guess let's just see where they go. The hanged man. Oh, That's where we currently interesting, are. Interesting, interesting. The different perspective, yeah. I I would say, the hanged man indicates... Um, it's a, well, look at the guy. He's he's <coughs> literally upside down, but he's got the little like the Jesus thing around his head. So it's like the aura, the halo yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. So it's like yeah. seeing things from a different perspective. Mm. He's very like if everyone is if everyone in the whole world is thinking this, he's thinking eh, what about that? So Sounds I think about that's right. Kind of accurate. <coughs> it's very, I would say, different than other. Uh, would you say? And then the future. The Ace of Wands. Whoa! This is very interesting. Double. So if I remember the Wands correctly, that's the Journey card. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. The work. The fire. The the journey. The creativity. The again, it's like a new idea, but it's not so much an idea. It's more of a new, like a passion type thing. Now, what do you think that the Ace of Wands Mm. indicates for for our guy Justin here? Well, he's on a very interesting path, I would say, knowing him, because I've met him before as well. Yeah. 
and uh, I know he's got a lot of very interesting ideas, to say the least. Uh -huh. He sees the world completely different than a lot of people. Uh -huh. But he's on some new journey type stuff. How come it's always the new journey? I mean, it always is, of course. Yeah. Well, he, is he on the new journey or he's going well, to Well, he's heading, journey. it's coming. But notice, ooh, okay, okay, I think I'm seeing something here. Okay. Because notice, you know, he's very, he's attached to this. He's kind of attached to a rod here now. He's tied to the rod. Right? He's up, but it's, he's upside down. He's chilling. He's not like bothered by it. He's just having a good old time. Mm -hmm. But over here, it's like an unexpected rod. Mm. Cause like this is all. This is very like I know how the world is. I see it differently. I'm on that new shit. This is like out of nowhere. This new, this new passion type hmm. thing. Okay. So it's almost as if maybe. He could potentially leave this, you know, rod that he's just holding on to, and perhaps this unexpected one will come at him. It'll be this whole new, you know, journey from <coughs> this this place of, you know, this spiritual here you go type uh -huh. of situation. I think that's pretty spot on. Sounds I'd like love new, to see the future. New stuff. I know that was very short. That, that, was very, that was very quick. That was very quick, but we've been talking for about double an hour now. Double wands, though. Double wands. Or double, double uh, aces, which is interesting. Yeah. Ace, hangman ace. It's a lot of... Uh, what are you up to, Justin? A exactly. heavenly power going on over there. A lot of stuff coming at you. Yeah. It's like you had the stuff coming at you, gave you all these ideas. Now you're like, I got it all figured out. It's Everything's backwards. Okay. But then... What future, comes. the future is kind of like more <coughs> solidified. It's like okay, but here's this new, fiery, passionate, energy thing. But it's not what you're on already. It's like this new, unexpected mm -hmm. gift. Here you go. So it's almost like get off your shit and just you know accept the new idea. So yeah. now we have one final pull. For, the, for the people, the week. For today, our Sunday viewers. That's right. The kings and queens. The Tays and Moes. That's right. The, the Jays and, and the Moes. The Tavis and uh, Brendas of the world. <laughs> what do we got? But don't forget the Cheyennes. Ah. There's all sorts of beautiful people in this world. Um, there's also the... Uh, Garigliano's. <laughs> Don't forget about them. Oh, that's right. <laughs> the stars of the show. Ah. This is the Tavi. I say Tavi, and then the Tavi card comes up. This is one of the best cards you could ever possibly get. The star. I mean, a naked woman. What's better than that? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Can you name anything? No. <laughs> you can't? No. <laughs> you can't name one thing. Well, honestly, this is about it. as good as it gets. This is like the Eve card. Yeah. She's just chilling. She's in nature. She's got the stars. This is like, you know, everything metaphysical, but into the physical. Because obviously, like, yes, she's coming from the star, but she's then taking the water and, and putting it down. So it's almost like as above, so below. Didn't we say that earlier? That's what it is. As above. So below. So I think what the star is trying to tell us is kind of like bright, shining, ethereal. Um, you could say, I don't know, extraordinary. You could say spacious, bigger than life. I love it. Sounds like an amazing Sounds Sunday, like amazing it's week. Be a good day, guys. I like this. I'm looking forward to it. And if the ghosts are around, tell the ghosts, guys. Pour those little those little tears into the into the water. You That's know, right. Guys. I mean, you don't need them. You don't need to be fucking with Mike over here, MT, with the fucking knife and all that. Yeah, just you need take, to stop that. Just just take your little soul, pour it back into the ocean as you should, and then go off and be a star. You don't gotta hold on to this earth so badly. It's it's great, sure, but I mean, there's a lot more. There's a lot more planets than Earth. You can just 
ghosts, please just, you know. Go to Schmurth. Go to Schmurth. Yeah. Exactly. Well, thank you guys for watching. It's an amazing story today. Amazing. I episode. can't believe that actually happened, to be honest. I, I honestly, I, that's probably like my favorite, favorite story to tell. That's like the, that's, that's what solidified that's insane, it insane, dude. It is. So, if you guys were wondering if ghosts are real, are they? 100%. There you go. Take a cold shower. Yeah.